Hi, my name is Katie Littlefield. I am the school board president of the Rockton School District, and I am going to read chapter two of A Boy Called Bat. After finishing his snack, Bat went to his room. Bat's room was his favorite place in the whole world. In his room, Bat felt completely comfortable. Here, he knew where everything was. If something was in the wrong place, it was his own fault because no one messed with his room but him. In the rest of their small house, Bat's mom and sister knew to put anything that needed to go to Bat's room in one of the three baskets. His clean laundry basket, his book basket, and his miscellaneous, miscellaneous stuff basket. Miscellaneous was a great word and one of Bat's favorites. It meant all the extra stuff. So the miscellaneous stuff basket could have almost anything except clean laundry and books in it. When the baskets were full, mom placed them in the hallway outside Bat's door. He took them into his room and unloaded them himself. Once, mom had tried to reorganize his dresser drawers because she thought he could use some help. After, when he was so upset he couldn't even speak, she said, I'm sorry, Bat, but your drawers were just a mess. Your hats mixed in with pants and sweaters. I don't know how you find anything. But the drawers weren't a mess, not at all. If mom had looked more closely, she would have seen that his knit caps were in with his long pants and his sweaters because he always wore those things together on cold days. Shorts and t-shirts were in another drawer because he wore those things together on warm days. But what about this drawer, mom had asked, pulling open the bottom right drawer, which held a pair of pants, a wool sweater, and two t-shirts. Those are the things I never wear, Bat told her when he finally calmed down, because they're itchy and uncomfortable. Then mom cut the tags out of the t-shirts and Bat moved them to his warm days drawer. After that, mom left his, him to his own devices, as she liked to say. Once in his room, Bat closed the door. There was a sign on the outside that said, please knock. Janie had written it for him because her writing was much neater than his. Janie could do all the hand things better than Bat. Write things, cut things out, smooth peanut butter on bread. The clock told Bat that mom would be home in 46 minutes. Mom was a veterinarian which was what Bat intended to be, too, one day. Mostly she treated cats and dogs, but sometimes she had an unusual patient. Once she had taken a BB pellet out of the wing of a hawk. The pellet had broken one of the bones, and Mom had done surgery to mend it. She'd brought home x-rays to show Bat. Why would anyone shoot a hawk, Bat had asked. Do you think they were going to eat it? No, said Mom. Sometimes people do stupid things. She had been very angry about the hawk, angrier even than when Bat and Janie got into loud screaming fights. Seeing the x-ray of the hawk's broken wing made Bat angry too. But his room always made him feel better. It had a roll-down bamboo window shade and a fine closet of full of shells and a pull-out trundle in case someone, someday a friend, came to spend the night. It had a ceiling fan and a reading lamp and a rug with a picture of a train track printed on it. Bat felt like looking through his animal encyclopedia, which he often did after school, so he pulled it down from the bookshelf and dropped comfortably onto his beanbag. His stomach was full of a sandwich and Mr. Grayson hadn't assigned any homework. For this moment, at least, Bat felt perfectly content. <laughs>